Most men are suffering from an identity complex. The symptoms are everywhere all around us. From the guy who's constantly posting on social media only to show us the highlight reel, to the man who's obsessed with status because he's building perceptions on how he wants the world to see him and view him. We also have the older guy who's going through the midlife crisis. In addition to all the internal insecurities that we battle daily as men, we have the world constantly bombarding us with marketing campaigns, telling us what we're missing, who we are, how we should think, and what we are supposed to have. In today's show, I'm going to show you how to build an unshakable identity. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Raising the Standard, leadership, mindset, and development for you, the kingdom man. If you're an ambitious Christian man, you wanna level up in all areas of life, you're in the right place. And today's topic, I wanna talk about how to develop an unshakable identity. Because if you are going to accomplish what God calls you to accomplish, you must have a vision, you must have a mission, but you also must be unshakable in who God says you are. So I want to talk about these attacks on our identity. I want to talk about how we struggle. And I'm even going to tell you how I have dealt with identity issues as I go from each stage in my life to the next one. And when we talk about identity, it's so important because it affects everything, literally everything, because the way you see yourself will determine the way you see your world and the way you relate to your world, all of those relationships everyone around you, from your family, your significant others, all the way to how you relate to others on the job. And so for a moment, I just want to talk about how our identity is formed. And maybe you're aware of this, but your identity is formed at a very young age. This is what makes your personality your personality. It's what makes you you. It's what makes you who you are. And it's based on your relationships, your experiences, and your upbringing. All of these factors combine together to give you a unique fingerprint that no one else has because no one has the same exact experience, the same exact upbringing, and the same exact relationships. So for Christian men, we do have advantages with our identity, and we're going to talk about that today. But we also share similar struggles with other men. Because this is formed at a young age, because we have stuff that we're dealing with that we have to come out of and that we're rewiring as humans, we are going to share some similar struggles to each other in the area of identity. So in today's show, I'm going to focus on one critical aspect of identity. And this is really important, guys, because we have to understand this. And this is a lie. It's a false reality. And here is what it says. It says this, you are what you do. And I want you to think about it for a minute because we are programmed from a young age to start to fixate our identity and, and form our identity around what we want to become. What's the most common question you were asked growing up? What did you ask your children or your nieces, your nephews? It's usually, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's a harmless question. You don't mean to do any hurt by it, but what you're actually saying is you're starting to fix value and fix identity and ground it in something that you do. And it carries over to adulthood because it doesn't matter when you meet someone for the first time, whether you're sitting next to them on an airplane, it's a business meeting, you run into someone at the gym. When you start a conversation and when two guys meet, what's the first question we always ask? What do you do for a living? And right there is where a measuring system starts to emerge. I write about this in the standard. I talk about this exact issue because this measuring system emerges where we start to decide where do we fit in the status order. This is what guys do. We compare each other. We have these comparisons where we look at each other and we start to develop. And if you don't know your identity and you're not secure, what happens is you're going to default into one or two camps. You're going to default either into an inferiority complex or on the other side of the spectrum, you default into a superiority complex because you are measuring your worth based on the man next to you. And if you make more money, you feel empowered. And if you make less, you may feel weakened if you don't know who you are. So whether it's inferiority or superiority, I want you to recognize that all of these complexes are rooted in fear and insecurity. 
And they really come from being attached to the external because it goes back to, I am what I do. And based on what I do, how much money I make, how that's perceived in reality, how the world sees that occupation, that position, or that title, that tells me what I'm worth. That tells me my internal value, and I'm deriving my value and my identity from external titles, external belongings, possessions, and status based on what I do for a living. So if we go back to God's original intent for man, and I have many episodes on this, if you check out the first five episodes of the Raising the Standard podcast and show, you will find that we talk about this at length, the way God created us to be, to rule, to reign, to take dominion over the earth and where we live. And we can see very clearly right from the jump that God's plan was for us to be fully secure, fully confident in our identity and the way we relate to him our wives, our families, and the world around us. All of this comes from knowing God as Father. Jesus actually teaches this when he teaches the disciples how to pray. He starts off with saying, when you pray, pray like this, and he says, our Father. So right away, we see a father-son relationship. If God is our Father, then I am by default his son. So if I'm saying our Father, I automatically know that I'm a son. And what's one of the number one things that fathers do? Fathers provide identity. God, our father, does this for us. And also as natural fathers, fathers provide identity to their children. And hopefully if you are a father, you're doing that for your children right now. So the key I want to give you is it is imperative. It is of prime importance that you know who you are. Because you will never fulfill God's assignment, calling, and mission on your life if you are wavering in your identity, if you don't know who you are, if you're constantly double-minded and second-guessing who you are, how you relate to God, it's going to affect everything from the way you see yourself to the way you see relationships to the way you see and interact with the world. This is why we need validation from our Father. And even Jesus has this in his own ministry. Before he starts his mission and ministry, he goes into the Jordan, he's baptized by John, and the voice from heaven proclaims and declares that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That was validation. That's something that Jesus had in his life before he launches his ministry and mission. It's something you and I need in our lives, and it's something that we need to give to our children as fathers right now. Jesus knows who he is. When he gets out of the Jordan, there's no doubt in his mind that he knows what his mission is, his calling is, he's been validated, and he's now ready to step into that calling that he's been waiting 30 years of his life to step into and start to fulfill. He never bends, he never wavers, and Jesus came under a lot of attack. He's going to have multiple segments of the culture attacking him, hating on him, telling him he's not who he is always railing against him and trying to cause him to fall, catch him in a scenario, or trip him up in some line of questioning. Despite this, Jesus never wavers in his identity. Another thing we can take away from this is that when you are secure, you will trigger the insecurities of those around you. So if you actually know your identity, you're walking in it, you know who you are, you know whose you are, you are secure as a man, guess what? Most guys are not secure in who they are. This can actually happen to you with men from different statuses and classes, even people that you work for. Because you're secure in who you are, you can trigger the insecurity of another man. So let's pause here for a second. Just think about, is there ever a time where you were triggered because someone walked in the room because you met someone that had a higher level status, title, or position in society than you? or they were secure in their identity, they just know who they are regardless of what they're doing for a living, and all of a sudden you feel a little weakened. You feel a little bit threatened. There's something triggering in that because it's triggering insecurity in you because their security is making you feel insecure because you don't walk in that same level of security. That's real, guys. That's something we need to look out for, and that's a great test to measure if there is insecurity or an identity issue in your life right now. And this happens to everyone. I just want to tell you, I'm going to tell you my personal story as well. Um, For those of you that listen to the show and you know a little bit about me, I've been in many positions throughout my life, but for the last 17, 18 years, I've been working in a corporate environment. 
I'm part of a high performance culture. I've been in positions of leadership and authority and all of these things attach titles and a level of status or prestige to the way you see yourself and to the way that others see you. And I deal with a lot of executives. And as I was climbing the ladder, I started to realize that every time I went into a new position, I started to feel this imposter syndrome. This is totally normal. And the guys that I talk to, the brothers I walk with, this is something we all deal with. Whether you can acknowledge it right now or not, it's probably something you've dealt with in your life at one point or another. And it's something, honestly, I still deal with from time to time, wondering and asking, am I supposed to be here? And the thoughts that go through your head as you're dealing with imposter syndrome are, what if they find out who I really am? What if they see that I'm not that good? And guys, because I work with men, I know we all share these similar thoughts and struggles, whether they're spoken or unspoken. I started to realize this was very normal, not only from talking to other men that deal with this, when they can open up and be transparent with you, but as I was going to the next level in my career, I was reading books, I was investing in my professional development to understand what it's going to take to play at the next level that I just went into. And I found out from multiple executives that everyone deals with this. And I started to observe it in those around me. So it doesn't matter, even if you are the VP of a company or you're progressing to the CEO level or wherever you are in the pecking order or organization, whether you're a blue collar guy, whether you're a white collar guy, we all deal with this level of, am I fully ready? And that was something that I dealt with for a long time in multiple positions that I held. And I actually had friends come up to me and say, hey, I just wanna tell you, you belong here. You're supposed to be in this role. And it would help me overcome and break through the barriers. But I'm sharing this because I want you to know that wherever you find yourself today, you're probably dealing or wrestling with a little bit of insecurity. That's normal. And I want you to know that it's to be expected as you progress into new positions, rooms, projects, and assignments in your life. Here's the thing about things that can trigger our identity. They're moving targets. So you might be listening to this right now and you're saying, Josh, I don't have this issue. This is not me. Well, let me just tell you, when the room changes, the way you see yourself may change. So right now, you may feel secure. You may feel great. You feel rock solid in your calling, your assignment, and where you are. What happens when you step into the next role? When you're stretched to the next position, when you're pushed out of your comfort zone, you may find that you start comparing yourself again to others around you. And guess what? You're like, okay, I'm playing bigger at this point. I'm in a different room. This is a different crew than where I came from in my last season. So we have to be aware of these things that attack us, that tell us we're not good enough or tell us we're not ready. So the question before us is how do you develop unshakable confidence? And I want to break this lie off of you right now. You are not what you do. So let's look at the example of Jesus because Jesus knows and relates to God as his father. And by doing that, he's modeling for us to do the same. It's the way he teaches us how to pray. It's the way he lives his earthly life. And it's actually the detailed instructions that he gives his followers, both you and me. So how do you develop unshakable confidence? Well, the key is in that sentence. You develop it. It's something you practice. It's something you walk out. It's something you walk with a constant awareness of because we're all dealing with junk from our past, experiences, traumas, things we've been through, bad relationships. And we have to be careful because as we walk out our new identity, we have to be aware of our default patterns and cycles that constantly try to pull us back. Old ways of thinking and relating to ourself and the world around us. So I wanna give you three ways you can develop unshakable confidence as a secure man in his identity. And I'm also gonna give you one warning. So first thing is follow the example of Jesus. Jesus teaches us to relate to God as our father. It's the way he instructs us to pray. It's the way he prays and he models it perfectly for us as the perfect son that we are to know God as our father and relate to him as a son. The next thing I want to point out is when Jesus starts his earthly ministry, he walks into one of the synagogues, he rolls open a scroll, and he reads Isaiah 61. In that prophecy that he is fulfilling, he is reading his identity, he is declaring it, and he's stating it in public. This is who I am. This is what I've come to do. So there's something connected here with what he reads, 
what he thinks about his meditation and also what he declares. So what we can do with this, guys, is start to read and meditate and think about, rewire our thoughts by meditation, thinking about who God says we are. And I'll give you a quick place to start. If you're looking for solid identity scriptures, they're all through the Bible, but I'll give you a place to start. Look at Ephesians chapter one and chapter two. Spend some time there thinking, reading, recognizing, and being aware of how your father sees you. I also want you to expect attack. Guys, we have an enemy. We've been talking about this for the last two episodes, and I brought up something in the last two episodes I'm going to bring up again. When Jesus steps into his mission, his ministry, and his calling, he is attacked by the enemy in the wilderness. At his weakest point, there is an attack on his identity. If you really are who you say you are. So I want you to expect attack when you start to pursue becoming secure, becoming grounded in your identity, because you're going to be so dangerous to the enemy when you know who you are. You can expect to get thoughts that say you're not good enough. You can expect to get thoughts that come against you that say you're not ready. You'll never be ready. God doesn't love you. What about your past? You still have sin in your life. There's something there that's disqualifying you from who you're called to be recognize the lies, dismiss them, and refocus and ground yourself on who God says you are, not who the world or the enemy says you are. The last thing I want to give you is we talked a lot about inferiority, superiority. Where do I see myself? How do I see myself? So there is a place to get a realistic view and be self-aware of how you are being perceived and how you're showing up in life. So yes, we get our identity from God. We know him as father. We relate to him as son. But that doesn't mean we can walk into just any position, any room, and be prepared to crush that assignment. Because we're all developing in our gifting, we're all developing in our calling, and we're all stewarding the gifts in our lives. So we need to be surrounded by trusted advisors who can tell us how we're really showing up. What are we really doing? Are we walking out our identity? Are we not developing ourselves? So find those guys in your life that will give you open and honest feedback as to how you are showing up. Now, guys, this issue of identity is so critical, and we can see it all around us in culture. There's an attack on identity right now. This is why I wanted to get this episode out to you. I wanted to keep it short and concise so you have something that you can start to work with, think about, and practice as you grow secure in who God says you are. Now, there's a lot more work to be done in this area. We just don't change this in one instant. One podcast is not going to totally change everything that you are and the way you see yourself. If you practice what I spoke about on today's episode, you will start to move in the right direction. So there's a lot more we can say about this, and we will on future episodes. If you want to go deeper into this topic, I actually devote an entire chapter in the book, The Standard, Discovering Jesus as the Standard for Masculinity, where I talk about Jesus is confident in his identity, and he calls you to be confident in yours. Guys, let's raise the standard. Hey guys, I wrote a book that went on to become a bestseller. It's called The Standard, Discovering Jesus as the Standard for Masculinity. I would love for you to get this. It's available on Amazon right now. But if you visit standard59.com, you can get the first chapter of the book for free. I wanna give you the chapter called Jesus Has a Plan. And you need a plan as well. There's specific areas in your life that you will be attacked in. How do I know? Because Jesus was attacked in these areas as well, and there's a pattern to it. And I wanna give you this chapter so you can see how Jesus effectively deploys a plan in his life and how he sets the standard for all men to follow and why we need a plan as well. If you want that chapter, go over to standard59.com and grab it. If you wanna get the book, you can get the book on amazon.com. Thanks for watching today's video. And if something resonated with you, please leave a comment below. Let us know what it was. Tell us what you would like us to explore for future episodes. Go ahead, like this video, subscribe to the channel and continue to raise the standard.